What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here, and today we're gonna take a look at the newest usurper of the throne. Now this machine here is called the Alm Kopi, and it is a direct lever machine that is PID controlled. So obviously, immediately you think about how it's gonna take on the Flare 58, which has reigned supreme since its release back a few years ago. The Flare 58 has been kind of the dream for enthusiasts that wanna get in and have full control over their espresso. They wanna replicate the curves they see people pulling on decent espresso machines or Lely Biancas. They wanna be able to have the descending pressure profiles, the blooming espressos, the elanges, different things like that that you can't get from a typical nine bar pump machine. Now, obviously in that time, there have been competitors to have arisen, including ones that we've looked at on this channel, like the Supercop, as well as the MHW3 Bomber Sonic. So those are ones that I think are not necessarily as good of a cost benefit as the Flare 58, although they do both give you that 58 millimeter lever espresso machine feel and experience. I think the Cafe Lot Robot is incredible, but it's a completely different machine to what the Flare is attempting to do. When I look at the Flare, I'm looking at a direct lever that's 58 millimeters and that has an actively heated group. So something like the Sonic obviously was not the same thing because it didn't have that heat application, which is why I didn't want to directly compare it to the Flare with the actively heated group. This one, however, has that group that is being heated up and it's PID controlled, meaning you can control the granular temperature of this brew chamber. With the Flare, you have three heated settings and they tend to oscillate. They're kind of big areas. And I've done a lot of case readings in this video that has super crunchy audio. So only watch it at your own risk. I don't know the words, so my daddy boomed. I'm in love. I'm all shook up. Oh, sorry. I seem to be all over the place, which is a uh, MO for this channel. Welcome. I'm a little bit rough. But anyway, that brings me to the following segment, which is from the sponsor of today's video, and that is BetterHelp. So a few months ago, I started using BetterHelp, which is an online platform for therapy, and it has helped me tremendously to work through some of the things that I personally struggle with. BetterHelp is sponsoring today's video and they will actually give you a 10% off if you check the link down below in the caption, which is www.betterhelp.com slash Lance Hedrick. You'll get 10% off your first month and it's a very easy process. You go through the app, you answer a few questions, you get partnered with a therapist and you go right into the session. You can take notes on the app and you can have these conversations with a therapist and find the one that really clicks with you. It is very important to make sure we keep our mental health in check. So if that is something you're interested in, please consider the link down in my bio. Otherwise, find other resources around you. I cannot stress enough the importance of mental health. So however you are going about trying to help yours, that is the way to go. The only reason this machine came on my radar at all was because someone in a Facebook group tagged me and told me, hey, You've looked at these other machines, why haven't you looked at the Alm Kopi? And I was like, well, simply put, I've never heard of it. So they sent me a link and I bought it that evening. And this was right after I did that Supercop review. So I've had this for a couple of months and I've been playing around with it a lot. As you see, that is a pretty tall boy. The Alm Kopi is a couple of centimeters higher but they're somewhat similar. So it is a bit easier to pull down than something like the Flare is. And they have this big handle for you to grab it if you wanna do just that one hand pull with a really comfortable grip. A design flaw is when you pull this all the way down it will buff up against that chamber there and in fact there there's like a little scratch just a tiny one a little nick that you can see from when I pulled it down these aren't necessary as long as you're not slamming it into that body at the end of your shot which you shouldn't be but as long as you're not you're fine I went ahead and did this because honestly I don't really see it it doesn't really bother me Inside here you have that piston and normally it just kind of goes up and down, right? But this one, because they want to give you a bigger range of motion, they have a ball joint in there. So that as you pull back, that piston doesn't need to stay perpendicular, it can come back with the lever. So you have a bigger range of motion in a massive chamber. In fact, this chamber can hold around 110 to 120 grams of water, depending on how you're filling it. If you just were to let haphazardly fill it, you're probably gonna get like an 85 or 90 gram shot if you're going for some sort of a longe. A lot of people want with these lighter roasted coffees to be able to pull these type of alanges where it's a one to five ratio and they don't really have the capacity on a Flare 58 or other levers of similar size like the Sonic. So the thermoprobe, as you see, the wire is wrapped back here and it goes down into the body of the machine, which obviously feeds down and we connect it to that PID controller. 
It's when you push it down in that it'll start to read the temperature inside of the brew chamber itself. So this is how it's able to take temperature of the water in order to ensure you're hitting the temperature that you're wanting. What we have here is the PID controller box. You have the, the temperature on the bottom is what you have it set at and on the top is what it is in reality. Obviously with no water in there, it's just measuring the radiating heat because it's not touching anything. The thermoprobe is just in the air. So it's very hot if it's reading 91 right now, but that is this box is a necessary component. So that is something I know will turn off a lot of people, kind of like those big bricks that you get with some grinders. Now, a lot of times with things like this, you need water inside before you turn that on. But of course, like the Flare 58, you don't need anything inside. You can start heating it up without any water. If you want it to get all the way up to temp before you put water in, it's hard to give you an exact number because that rod in there needs water to be more effective in reading temp. And since it's not touching the walls, it's giving you just that air temperature. So. I would say it's around five minutes that you're good to go, but I did read it all the way to 10 minutes and the temperature on here read up to 90 degrees, which means the air inside got up to 90. Well, I don't know what offsets they have programmed in here. Whatever it is, it's not perfect. So whenever this says 98 degrees on the box, it is not 98 degrees in here. It's about 93 or so. And I think some of that is because the heating is not perfectly even throughout the whole chamber. So it's heating up certain parts of the water more than other parts. What I've done is I've figured out what the difference is between this box and the group head based off of reading it with the thermoprobe inside. And then whenever I want a 95 degree shot, I'll just set it to 100 degrees on here. On all seriousness, you don't even need to know what that offset is. Just dial in your coffee to where it tastes good and just make note of that number. The number's just for relativity's sake, just for comparison's sake anyway. But if you want to know exact numbers so you can share recipes or something like that, then you might want to get a probe or something uh, that is an external one that's not connected to their settings here in order to verify what the temperature is inside and then you'll be good to go. So if you feel confident with your kettle temperature, you can also do kind of like a janky system in order to figure out roughly where it's at using your kettle uh, temperature. This is a really massive thermal load up here with all that stainless steel. And so it's not gonna do too much, but you could get somewhat of a descending temperature if you're, if you're so inclined by doing something like that or by using a colder portafilter, not heating it up if you wanna have a more natural declination of temperature. This is Smart Espresso Profiler. I added that. This has not come on the machine, so don't think that. You take the T-splitter away and put this pressure gauge into this little bent elbow joint. That's what the machine comes with, which is a really nice angled pressure gauge so you don't have to like look down. It's looking up right at you. Now, if you see inside, there is kind of a light synthetic oil uh, that is in here. And so you see a little air bubble at the top. This is very common for pressure gauges, especially in lab experiences. The oil is in there in order to stop any type of ground vibrations that might skew the reading. So this kind of grounds the needle so that you have a more accurate reading, more accurate representation as you're pulling. If you've used something without oil inside, you'll notice, you know, if your arm is shaking or something, you get little wibbles and wobbles and it can way overdo it. Uh, so this is gonna stop a lot of that from happening. Now, I personally like the pressure gauges from Smart Espresso Profiler. I already have like four of them, so it's not that hard for me to switch it out, but they have a steampunk aesthetic, which is similar to this aesthetic, so that's something I personally would probably switch out if using this long-term. Standard 58, and I did put in a high extraction basket. This one's from Posado, just to show that it does fit in here. No worries, no issues there. It comes in with its own 18 gram basket. You can use the stock basket if you like. Handle comes off pretty easily. There's not much threading where it's tight. It's either tight or it's loose. You hear that? That's a little nitpick of mine, but I'm a very tactile person and that's kind of like nails on a chalkboard for me. There are a few different options for bases you can get. They have, a, 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 I believe they have an actually an upgraded wood to this one that's even more expensive, like a pear wood. They have this wood you can get, and then they also have a stainless steel drip tray you can get that weighs like four or five kilos. But I got this one, I thought it looked really nice, matched the portafilter. This one, you're never gonna tip because A, it's heavy as lead, and B, it's very, very long. So it does a good job with that as well. I hate the shock collar. It does have these nice magnets on it, but this lip fits inside of the basket, which is a no-go no for me. It makes the little indent around and it's just, it's not good. I don't want that. I kind of like the tamper. It has the, the feeling of like a big step from Pullman. I mean, I'm still a fan of self-leveling, even though with self-leveling, it doesn't guarantee level tamps. 
but it is nice to use and I'm really a fan of this curve here. It fits really nicely on my thumb. It fits the basket really well, which is a big issue. A lot of tamps that come with the machines miss. And uh, this one, this one hits pretty decently. The last thing to note is that when it came in, there were a couple of things I just needed to tighten a little bit. And as you see, it still has a little wobble to it, which I think is probably necessary based off of how the piston is. With that ball joint, it needs a little bit of wiggle room, but there is a little wiggle there. Now, whenever you're pulling down, you don't notice it. It's just when it's fully up. When you're in flex, obviously you don't notice that at all. And then in addition to that on the PID box, there are four screws on both sides, eight little Phillips head screws that I did end up tightening up because there was a little wobble in this box itself. All right, so first up, I'm gonna brew a darker roasted coffee to kind of give you an idea of what this looks like. I have my water up to temp, so I'm gonna toss it in here. I have it set here at 94, so it's around 88, 89, because it's a darker roasted coffee. We let it drop a couple of degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and just pull it because YOLO. So let's get all this set up. I'm gonna put a mirror underneath it so I can watch it. And we lift, lift the piston up to drop the water in through the valve, and then I'm gonna do some pre-infusion. There we go. I have the full bottom saturated. A couple drippy drips come out. I'm holding it at, yeah, I guess I'm a little higher pressure than I should be. I wasn't really watching the pressure. We'll hold it at four bar for a bit. And now I'm gonna ramp up to around eight and a half, nine, and just slowly let it descend. We have a 17 gram dose, so I'm just gonna do a one to two. And we just lift the piston up when we want it to stop. We'll just stir it up a little bit, give it a little sippy sippy out of this nice little traditional Italian cup. And then we'll pull a lightly roasted coffee. Cheers. That is thick. That's some coal right there. And a little tip that I know a lot of people probably don't think about, but when you're, when you're using something like this or the Flare 58 that has that one-way valve, I would recommend when you're getting the plunger up, don't go all the way to the top unless you fill water to the top. All right, go up until just the last bit of water goes through. That way you limit the amount of air inside of the chamber, which is gonna give you a bit easier time and a bit more direct control over that extraction process without having that spongy feel with an, a, a little gap of air inside. Just to show you the capacity of this, we're gonna do like a Rayo Lange type thing, a much higher, faster flow shot at a one to five ratio. 18 grams of a coffee from Ecuador. It's a Pepe Gijon coffee, so I had to use the cup that Pepe gifted me himself when we were out in Greece together. Tipica Mejorada, roasted by Ilsa Coffee. So right now we have it set at 96. It's currently at 96. That's what that rod is reading inside because everything's been nice and preheated, so it has really nice radiation going on inside and it's able to read that temperature. Now. Some of you may be wondering, can this heat up the water from room temperature? I guess it could. I, it's not meant for that. You're supposed to heat it up and heat your water up independently. That being said, I did put 50 degree water in this just yesterday when I was doing some final testing. Out of curiosity, it heated it up to the proper temperature in a matter of minutes. So you could do it. And in fact, what I'll do right now is my water is at about 80 degrees. I'll go ahead and put it in and it should raise it up pretty quickly because if that rod is reading 96, it's probably a little hotter in there. So I'm gonna fill it up. Now something to note is you should not go more than about a centimeter from the top because A, it won't get all that, it won't allow all the water through, the piston doesn't go that high. Uh, and B, if it is really hot and it starts to boil in one of the areas, it can spit out over the, the edges there. When I'm doing a, a, an Alange style, which is like a 30 or 35 second shot um, at, at a one to five ratio, I don't want it to be too hot because it'll be really hot in the glass. It's a much more efficient extraction, yada, yada, yada. We won't get too much into that. You just turn this bad boy on, it gets it to that temp, you throw the water in, you wait till it equalizes, or you go right away, it's up to you. Uh, and, and you'll get incredible espresso with really granular temperature uh, capabilities. We have our coffee in here, we're gonna try to do a one to five, so 18 and 90 out. This might be pushing the bounds just a bit, but let's go ahead and try it anyway. So we're gonna lift slowly to make sure that water gets in there. There we go. Actually, now that I'm up here, there's a little bit more water that can go in. There we go. All right, so now we're at full capacity and we're gonna start. Going up to about eight bar and we're just gonna live right here for a bit. Slowly descending. 
as that puck is eroding. Right about 50 grams, 60, 70. Oh, we're gonna go just a bit shy, okay. So maybe we can't get a full one to, uh, one to five on the 18 grammer, but we got an 80 gram shot, not too shabby. Cheers. That's way more up my alley. I mean, there's like no body there because it's a one to five and it was done in like, I don't know, 35 seconds or so, but good grief. That is just punchy and sweet and it's it's all the right things in all the right places, okay? It's, uh, that's a 10 out of 10. From all the levers I've used, the home levers, the hue and all these different things, this is definitely my favorite when it comes to direct levers. Here we have the Odyssey Argos, which I call best bang for your buck when it comes to these home levers or even home espresso in general. And the reason I say that is it's a more encapsulative kind of term when you say best bang for your buck, what all you're getting for your dollar. So this is about double the price of this one, yes. But when you look at it, it's about it's about 1100 US dollars, whereas this is around 600 currently. Yes, you have PID control in both. This one though, you don't have this massive box. It's all housed inside with a really advanced algorithm that relies on a boiler. And it's very, very accurate as I show in that video. In addition to that, you have a steam wand. This one has no steam wand because there's no closed boiler to build steam pressure. You have a direct lever option on this, which this also has that. In addition to that, you can do spring lever. You can have a six bar, seven bar, eight bar spring inside of this that's easily changed by you, the home user, for whichever you're wanting. And that comes with it. You get one spring and you get the direct capability. You also have two different areas where Bluetooth is reading the temperature in the machine and can send it to you on your phone if you're so inclined. It also has a pressure gauge built into the steam boiler cap, which is a really helpful feature. Now this does have a pressure gauge for the group head, but it's because that's almost mandatory for a direct lever in order to really see what you're doing so you can really have a lot of fun with it. Since this, a lot of people want the spring configuration, pressure gauge at the group head is not 100% mandatory. You can use it to see what's going on, but a spring pressure profile is a spring pressure profile. You can obviously make it so it ends at one bar based off of your grind size, or you can make it so it ends at three bar or four bar or six bar based off your grind size, and you can use a pressure gauge for that. But in reality, it's a lot less important than when you're doing direct lever. This to me is the best bang for your buck. But the best budget option for kind of an end game thing that was the Flare 58, I think has now been re replaced with this. The Flare 58, which has been the king since its release back in 2021, I believe. And it was kind of a game changer for home direct levers and accessibility when it comes to lever machines at home, as well as good espresso at home. And most importantly, probably the 58 millimeter at home. Not most important because it's most important, but most important in that it's caused such a big ripple effect. This was a big game changer and is honestly, definitely to credit for the advent of this Almacopi, as well as the Sonic and the Supercop and, and, and the others. This one has kind of held a monopoly on the market it since its release, and for good reason. They launched with a actively heated group, which no one has replicated since, not to my knowledge at least, when it comes to this style of just open type uh, cylinder lever machine. When it comes to functionality, when it comes to all of those types of things, ergonomics even with the easier lever, this one does take the cake at the same price point in my opinion. The build quality of both is actually pretty similar because this one, it's not made of stainless steel, it's more of like an aluminum, but when you lift it, you still have that wobble about it. The frame will flex when you're pulling which can cause issues in your extraction. Now you might say, well, when it's under pressure, it doesn't matter where that stream is coming out. You would be correct. It's the fill rate at the beginning. If you're pulling down and there is a flex in the frame, it could skew to one side during the fill and then the rest of the shot could be skewed as well. Now that's theoretical. If you're getting great shots, that's great. My point is just in theory, that flex is not ideal and is something that you cannot get away from. There is no flex in this one. It is made of stainless steel. It's a bit more robust. It has a much bigger kind of base here. You're not limited on the scale you can use, whereas with this, you can't really use a bigger scale. You get granular temperature control, which for people, especially with lighter roast preferences, is of utmost importance. But if you're someone that has like a French roast or Italian roast type drinker in the house, and you like medium roast, having that capability of differentiating between those two is a really nice privilege to have, especially if you can do it at the same price point. Obviously, this comes down to you, the user. If you are in the market for something like this and you don't mind the aesthetic or this big black box, I think you'll be very happy with this machine. If you have a Flare 58, don't you dare say, I need to upgrade to that. That is not worth the upgrade. 
spend more money on better coffee, then spend more money on your water system and your grinder, and then mess with your espresso machine. But for those of you in the market, I, I, I am very excited about this. I am very happy that the person in that Facebook group recommended it to me, and I'm happy at, that I got it at 527 US dollars, though like I said, I think currently it's sitting around 600. My bet is it's gonna go on different sales like it did for me. It shows retail's 850, but I've never bought anything on AliExpress at retail. Who knows how this video will age with regards to the pricing of this. Hopefully there's not a negative effect on pricing with the release of this video, which has happened in the past with some other equipment. But yeah, I think that is about it for me today. And I hope I didn't tick off a lot of Flare users because genuinely this is still an incredible machine. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy what I do, please consider checking out my Patreon down below. I also have an Instagram, a second YouTube where I do other things. But the Patreon, we do competitions to give things away. Uh, this will definitely be put up there. I'll be giving a Flare 58 there through a competition here in a little bit. So that is it for me today. I hope that you brew something tasty and cheers.